Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we would be discussing. So we are given a string, and we need to find the minimum number of characters to convert it to a palindrome. Okay. Now palindrome means the character, the string which reads the same forward as well as backward. So if we write B A B and we flip like this. Then it would be B A B only, and these two strings would be same. Now, if we have A C D, then flipping that would be D C and A. This is not equal to this, so this is not a palindrome itself. Okay. Now we need to start inserting the characters. So A B C and D. So let's discuss about this problem. So what we can do is we can make this as the middle character because we saw that even if we are flipping this and it is not equal to this. The middle character remains the same. So what we can do is we can add map this B here, C here, and D here. So even if we flip this, this would remain as a palindrome. The number of characters added is equals to three. That is why the solution of this sample test case is three itself. Now there are many ways to do solve this problem. The first way is if that is already a palindrome. So if that is already a palindrome, then the answer is zero. The next possible way is if all the characters are different. So if all the characters are different, the two possible ways are either we make this as the middle character, or we just print a mirror image of it. If we print a mirror image of it, the answer would be incremented by one. But we want the minimum answer, so we would make this as the minimum. Okay, middle character. Now the next is we have A, B, A, and B. Suppose this is equal to a palindrome, but this is not. So if so. If we make this as the middle character, this won't be our answer. Rather, we this would be our answer. So there are many possible cases, okay, like this. So we need to check for all possible combinations. This is the first indication itself. So whenever we think of checking all possible combination or possible combination, we should think about something known as recursion. So if we think about recursion, we need to think about the base case. And we need to think about the parameters. We need to think about the intermediate case. So let's start with the parameters. Okay. So if we talk about the parameters, suppose we have A, B, and B. This is the most crooked test case to be this. So what we can do is we can have a character here. We can have a character here, and then we can check if these two characters are not same. Then we can append one character to satisfy the thrust of any one character, either on the left hand or on the right hand side. But if they are both equal, we would move aside. So we would have pointer known as L and R. L being zero and R being n minus one. That is n being the size. Now let's talk about the intermediate case. So either we can add a character in the left hand side or on the right hand side. So if we add a character on the left hand side. That means the thrust of the left hand, right hand side. Then that means the thrust of the left hand side character is done. So we would move the pointer of the left hand side to this place. Like suppose if we add this pointer and this pointer, if we want to satisfy this pointer, then we would add a pointer like this. Okay. Then, but this would remain at this position only. But this would be at this position. So we need to add a character here. So what we can think of is L plus one and R. But we would need one operation to do this. Same goes for this side also. So L and R minus one because we are moving in that side, and we would add plus one. Talking about the base case. So if we have two pointers, let's think about the smallest possible solution. The smallest possible solution is when they are pointing at the same character. That means no character needs to be added because it is already a palindrome. So we can say that the case is zero itself. Now the next part is when they have crossed each other. They have crossed each other. That means that there is no characters to compare. So again, it would be minus one, zero one. Now let's start the implementation, and you would get a better perspective of how to solve this problem. Now I am more accustomed to using small s, so I would use the slower cases. Now what I would do is, as discussed, I would just take a int n, and I would save the size of it. And then we will start the recursive one. So the return type would be an integer that would tell us the number of operation we need. And then we have a simple L and R itself. L being this side and R being this side. Then we would have the string S itself. Now, if L has passed or equal to the R, 
that means we need to return 0 at this point. Then if the particular L is equals to equals to particular R, then there is nothing to compare and there is no point in adding one operation to it. So what we would do is we would have an answer known as in answer and then we would save the answer. Answer is equals to rec of L plus 1 and R plus 1 okay and the string itself okay else if it is not equal then what we would do is answer is equals to minimum of rec of l plus 1 comma r and the s itself and rec of l and r minus 1 and the s itself and we would add a character plus 1 then we would just return the answer as answer itself then let's pass the parameters so we would have rec is equal return return rec of 0 comma n minus 1 comma the string itself so let us just check yes the value is correct now as we know the time complexity of this solution as we are making the observation either we are going this side or going this side that means it would be exponential but the time desired time complexity is big o of n square and this is the just the length of the string itself now what we can do is we can start saving the values that is known as memoization so what is the range of the values so let me tell what first see what are the things that are dynamic so s is the constant thing here s would be the same as given in the input the only changing thing is l and r so let us now see what is the range of L and R. So L would range from 0 till n minus 1. R would range from n minus 1 to 0. So we need a 2D array. Now what would be the size? So the maximum length is 501. So what we can do is we can have a DP array of 500 and a 500. And then what we can do is we can initialize every value to minus 1 dp of minus 1 comma size of this dp itself that is why no value is calculated so when we would come at this point that we need to compute the value we would check if dp of l and r is not equal to minus 1 it is already pre-computed then just return it why to calculate it again if that is not calculated after calculating just save it the point we want so it is done so now let us just check the values itself. Yes, the value is coming correct. So let us now submit this. Now let us submit this and see. And yes, we got an AC. Thank you and have a nice day.